Good evening, Bios Cosmos Church. Today, we are going to have youth Bible class. Today's lesson is entitled, Ephod Defeats Moab. A moment of silence for Black Lives Matter, please. Moment of silence complete. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for the eyes are about to see and what the ears are about to hear. Lord, have your way in our heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Guide us, teach us, heal us, deliver us, set us free. In the name of Jesus, we pray that all of God's people say, Amen. Today's Bible verse is, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Ephesians 6, 1. I have pledged allegiance to the flag of Bios Cosmos Church, that I may believe that for God so loved the world, that whosoever believeth in him, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, his, art, his only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Amen. And now today we will dive into Ehud defeats Moab. So what happened when the Israelites rebelled against God and worshiped false gods? So let me tell you a story. So Joshua led the Israelites into, who's banging on the wall? Who, who's banging on the wall? Joshua led the Israelites into the land of Canaan. And they were told if they could obey God, that they could stay there and live peacefully ever happily. But there was a catch. There were corrupted people there, pagans. Now, we live in the world with a lot of pagans today. They're called criminals, police lock them up all the time. But what happens is, in the, in, in back then, in, during that time, during that time, They started following the pagans and worshiping false gods. When they started worshiping false gods, they basically, God punished them by allowing the king 
Eglon to oppress them for 18 years. They became slaves of Eglon and had to work for him. Now, who was oppressing the Israelites? King Eglon. Now, what does what made Ehud distinctive from most other people? Ehud was left-handed. What did Ehud plan to do to liberate his people from the Moabites? They, Ehud, planned to kill the king of the Moabites. Now, what event put Ehud's plan into motion? So, the king was basically allowing people to come and see him. He had secret information that he wanted to tell the king in private. He wanted to get the king away from his bodyguards. Now, when they were alone, he told the king that he had a message from God for him. In order to hear this message, the king stood up and that made it easier for what King Edward, for not King Edward, for what Edward planned to do next. Now remember, back in the days, they only searched your right side. They didn't have metal detectors and all that whenever you're going into government buildings. They had to pat you down. Right side. They never did your left. Killed Anglin. So he stopped the weapon in and killed Anglin. So, how did Edhud's left hand in contribute to his success in carrying out his plan? I just told you that. They, they, he didn't know. So who provided the real victory over the Moabites? Ehud could have taken personal credit for the victory over the Moabites. Instead, he directed all his credit and glory to God. So the Moabites tried to escape, but he wouldn't let them. He used his people to block them in and they, he captured them, killed every one of them off. In other, in other news, Ehud did escape because you see, they thought that the, they saw that the door was locked. His bodyguard saw that the door was locked, wouldn't enter his office. And when they finally did, by the time they did, he was dead and he had been long gone. So, God always sends us what we need just when we need it. The irony is sometimes we do not know what we really need. So we do not value or appreciate what God sends us. During the period of the judges, the Israelites need deliverance. And that is exactly what God sent. The history is decorated with many great leaders. Moses, Joshua, Samuel, and David. This is just a few. When the great leader was needed, God raised up a great leader. And this had been true in the history of the church as well. In the time of crisis, he has been faithful to raise up such men, such as Martin Luther, Martin Luther John Calvin, John Wesley, Dwight L. Moody, and Billy Graham. When Joshua died, there was no great leader to come forward and lead the nation faithfully following God and his covenant. The entire world is in a similar crisis today. We need leaders to come forward and teach the truth of God and promote and demonstrate biblical principles that will Make us strong and pleasing to God. 
provided leaders in the form of judges. The, the leaders always came on God's timetable. Sometimes the people had to endure oppression for many years before a deliverer came. However, God gives us what we need just when we need it. Let all of God's people say, Amen. So, when it comes to making a difference, which one will you be? Will you be the one that says, I don't care? Or I'll do what needs to be done. Amen. 